People are tearing it down. But as soon as I realized that things like those I could never change, I ended up moving forward. If you lost, now you found. So like, comment, share, and subscribe right now. Cause I'm your plug and I'm about to put you on to Adrian's cooking and food review, baby. He'll give you the recipes. He'll have you down on one knee over his food. Adrian's cooking and food review. He'll give you the recipes. He'll have you down on one knee. Oh, baby. Adrian's cooking and food review, baby. Mm-hmm. You know how to use those spices too, baby. Mm-hmm. You ever had real Jamaican food? Some oxtails? You have? From where? California? Napa Valley? Cha, please. He'll give you the recipes. He'll have you down on one knee over his food. Adrian's cooking and food for you. He'll give you the recipes. He'll have you down on one knee. Oh, baby. Adrian's cooking and food for you, baby. Come on in, baby. And make sure you tell a friend. Okay. <laughs> hey, guys. Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to be making a product review on this Andy's chicken breading, which it says hot and spicy with a perfectly seasoned chicken. Uh, it says also excellent on beef and pork. But as you know, um, I never trust the flavors of anyone else, even though I wanted to try that product. So we're not just gonna use that alone. We're gonna season the chicken just mildly because we don't wanna take away from the product review, okay? So we're gonna go over with some black pepper. And normally, you know, I put a lot of spices on my stuff, but I'm gonna keep it simple today. A little black pepper. A little paprika. The paprika is just going to help to just give it a beautiful color. We're going to go in with a little bit of onion powder. And then a little bit of garlic powder. So you see we're doing it lightly today. And then we have our badia complete seasoning. I have the big bottle. This seasoning is amazing. A lot of fresh herb, dried herbs and spices. So... It doesn't have much salt content either. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna get in and we're just gonna rub these chicken up and let it marinate for about 30 minutes to an hour. Cause you know, wings normally take a little while for the flavors to start soaking in. So I'll see you guys in just a few. And we're gonna pair this with some Jamaican fried dumpling. And the reason why I'm doing that today is because I remember I did a fried dumpling and Joe Cola was like, can this go with fried chicken. So we're going to do fried chicken and fried dumpling. So see you guys in just a few. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. So we're going to be making our dumplings. So right now we have two and a half cups of all-purpose flour, three teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoon of salt, and four tablespoons of butter. This is cold butter. So what one do we want to get in there and kind of fold in our butter? into our thing so this is more like a biscuit and dumpling version because this is a recipe that i truly enjoy to make it's nice and buttery it's nice and fluffy it's nice and tender um you know everybody in jamaica make their dumpling differently so you got to follow a recipe that you think you will like so i'm going to go ahead and crumble all of this and then we'll be right back to start kneading our dough all right all right so we're kneading our dough, what we do is kind of stream a little bit of water each time to knead our dough. And our dough is coming together, but you just got to constantly add your water in and kind of get everything together. And you want to just have a nice light dough that has like, you know, together. This takes a quite a little bit of work. And then the butter is in there too, so you gotta be careful not to add too much liquid. I think our dough is coming together. I'm gonna keep kneading 
and then we'll come and show you how we're gonna make these dumplings, all right? All right, so we have our dough, it's already done. All right, and as you can see, the dough is nice and smooth. We're gonna go with a little fancy style of dumpling today, all right? So we're gonna pinch a piece off, right? There's our piece of dumpling, we're gonna roll it in our hands like this until we get like a rope-like consistency. And we're gonna be making like a knot. So you fold it under and you do that. So we make a knot. So we're gonna finish up all of these off camera and then we're gonna bring you over to the stove. All right, so we have our Indies chicken bread and we did put some in the bottom of the pan. We're gonna go ahead and sprinkle some more over the top. And this thing said you should let it sit for about five minutes so that, you know, the flavors and the seasoning and all those stuff can stick. And then you're gonna fry these for 12 to 15 minutes. So we're gonna let these sit for five minutes. So I'll see you over at the stove. All right, so we're gonna add in our dumplings now to our oil. Our oil is on medium low heat. So we're gonna add in all our dumplings and we're gonna fry these for about seven minutes. All right? All right, so we have our dumplings and you can see all them in the oil just bubbling. You can see the color start to develop on that one dumpling right there. We're gonna fry these on low because we want it to soak all the way through. We don't want any raw dough. So I said seven minutes is gonna be about seven to 10 minutes. You just gotta watch them. Once you see them start getting firm, and you stick the fork in there and it comes out clean and all those stuff. So I'm baking a cake, but just fry it, okay? Added our chicken. Chicken wings. So we have six pieces. We're gonna fry three at a time because we don't want to overcrowd our pot. All right, so I'll see you guys in just a few. All right, just look at those beautiful colors that our dumplings are starting to get. They have fluff up beautifully too. So you just wanna slow cook them so they can soak through. And they're gonna be nice and pillowy and buttery. Mm, 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 mm. But guys, just look at that. I know you wanna bite. All right, so our chicken is still going. We got about two more minutes left on it. As you can see, it looking nice and golden brown. I'm gonna really have to taste the flavor of this batter and tell you if it's really good. It seems like it's gonna create a nice crispy chicken. But as it relates to the flavor and seasoning, I'm not sure, but we'll see. So I'll see you guys in about three minutes when we're ready to take them out. All right, just look how lovely, fluffy, and delicious those dumplings look. Look at that fried chicken. Ooh! OMG. Guys, just look at that. All right, we're frying up our last few pieces of fried chicken, and then we'll be ready to mukbang. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, as you can see, we have some delicious, fluffy Jamaican fried dumpling. Now you get you hear the Jamaican accent, right? Jamaican fried dumpling. You hear it right? This is not Asian. This is not persuasion. This is the real deal. Fried dumpling, and then we have some fry chicken wings, all right? So, as you know, we use the Andes chicken bread in hot and spicy to bread these chicken. Uh, we have some Louisiana sweet heat hot sauce. This has honey and hot sauce, and we're gonna be drinking some green tea watermelon. So today is the part three and the finale of my experience as a business owner at the age of 24. So we're gonna get into this prayer, and then we're gonna take our thumbnail, and we're just gonna chat it up and enjoy this delicious food. So bow our heads. Most righteous and eternal Father, as we come before in your presence, we hope that you bless this food, bless the hands of prayer. Let it be of nourishment to my body. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, 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 amen. All right, so, you know, I went a little fancy. Oh no, everything is sliding. I got my tomato right there and I was like, let me go for a little presentation, but it don't seems to be working. So you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna move this down on the floor, this down on the floor. We're gonna get a chicken wing. There you go, you gotta come then. Mm. 
All right? So, you know, we started off with my journey as, uh, as young as the age of six or seven, um, trying to do business and so on. Then we went into a little bit more detail about me starting a restaurant 30 days, not knowing I would own a restaurant to own it. A little backstory of how pricing and all those stuff work. Now, when I became a business owner and decided to, and now starting to file my taxes and everything like that, I became very discouraged because as a business owner, especially a small business owner, you typically go through a lot of stress daily because now you have to focus on, do people like my food? Now, you like your food. Not everybody going to like it. Just like here on YouTube, you're going to have people who are just going to hate on you for no reason at all. Now, running this restaurant, I faced a few struggles in the beginning. Because, you know, I quit my job and I was working. I was like, all right, I'm going to start my own restaurant. Look at that. Mm. So, mm mm mm. Mm. So when I started this restaurant, for the first few days, you know it's new, so there's no way to gauge the business. So at certain parts of the day, we'd run out of certain items. And you know, the first week of opening, you obviously probably won't have everything that's listed on the menu. So I faced a few struggles where people, well, one person specifically, I left me a bad review. Now, you just imagine you starting your own business. You put your all into it. You are creating amazing recipes. And within the first week of your business, you get a two-star review. Saying they ran out a lot of things when you went there and all those stuff. It was devastating. It weighed on me. But I got through it because I knew I entered a different territory where I had to be strong, I had to trust, put trust in my food. I know that I got the skills to pay the bills. So I was like, all right, Adrian, just shake it off, shake it off. So moving forward, and that was just one bad review because everybody else who tried the food was raving. So I was like, listen, and people nitpick for the smallest things. So if you're not ready to get constructive criticism about your business, I tell you, do not start a business because you're going to get hate no matter what you do. There was this one person who left me a four-star review, which was great. But they were like, the curry chicken was delicious, but I wish they had taken the bones out for me. Now, traditionally in Jamaica, curry chicken is boning. Well, most of the meats are cooked boning. This person clearly sees it on the menu. And then they said, I wish you had taken on all the bones <laughs> <laughs> and you know things like those kind of irritate you as a business owner because you knew that you were putting out your best foot forward mm. and people are tearing it down but as soon as I realized that things like those I could never change I ended up moving forward Um. As time goes by, that same customer that left me a two-star review, it took them a while to come back. But now it's very important for you to get those reviews because with those reviews, you can improve on yourself. So, every time that person came back to the restaurant, it took a while to come back. And when they came back, I was like, all right, we got to be extremely careful of how we handle the situation because now that's going to determine the future of the restaurant. So. 
that person never left another review, I guess, because probably, I don't know what the situation was, but they did remove that two-star review and they always rave about the food from that point on. So that shows you that when you're in the business, you got to be proactive. You got to take constructive criticism. But if you're not ready for that, it's not for you. And, you know, I realized that I was in an era where people were not accustomed to um, meat on the bone. So I had to make the adjustment and use boneless chicken breast to make my stews. Because these people weren't familiar with them. But I'm also your pillowy and delicious that fried dumplings. Look at that. Mm. So yeah. Then going back to tax time. This was something that I did not know until I opened up my business. Business tax, expensive. Mm -mm -mm. Now, if you work for someone, all those Medicaid and Social Security and all of those stuff, your employer pays half of that money. Now, if you're self-employed, you operate your own business, you typically got to pay the whole money. So if you used to pay 2000 on your paycheck working for someone for the year, then you're now going to pay 4000 because you own your own business. Did you know that? So there are so many things. Look at that chicken. Mm. Sorry. There are so many things that can deter you from doing your own business. But I can tell you this. The feeling that you feel after you own your own business is amazing. Because you're like, all right, I had the courage enough start my own business to operate and then when you start seeing those great comments coming through and the people are like yes 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 now if you guys want to know what the name of the restaurant is it was called Wa Guan Diner now if you google that restaurant you're gonna see a lot of great things about it it was five star on Facebook over 70 reviews it was four point something on Yelp it was like 4.9 on TripAdvisor, and it was like 4.8 or 4.7 on Google. Now, now, can you not tell me that was a successful restaurant? It was. And I'm very proud to say that Wagwan Diner was owned by me and my dad, and we operated for two whole years. We have had so many amazing successes. We're on the TV and all those stuff. So it was great. It was a great experience. Now... The question that you might ask, would you do it again? Absolutely. Mm. And what would I do different this time? Mm. I wouldn't be there 24 seven because it's a lot of work. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. I have my fried dumpling so long. This is such a great trip. Mm -mm -mm. But yeah, running your own business, it's hard work. It's a lot of things that you have to do. There's so many changes that are going to happen that you got to be ready for. So, I remember when I started the restaurant for my um, state um, sales tax, it started off as me filing those every three months, every quarter. And then they came up with a rule saying if you're supposed to pay more than $500, I think $500 per month, then you got to start paying per month. Now, obviously, why you pay per month because it's 6%. Of your sales that you're gonna pay per month and if I can calculate correctly <laughs> six percent of you know I'm not even gonna mess with it right now I know I can calculate correctly but I don't want you guys to come for me and be like Adrian that's not right because I'm on the spot and I don't have time to think about it because we're trying to roll through this video <laughs> but if you know six percent uh, um that gonna calculate to $500 
Drop that down in the comment section <laughs> No, I'm lying. It wasn't 600. It wasn't 500 per month. I think it was 300. Yeah, I think it was 300 which You know, I ain't even gonna touch that right now. I'm very educated. Don't don't think that I'm not <laughs> Look at that wing mm -mm -mm. Mm. But yeah so they wanted their money per month, so they just cut out me doing it. So that was another added pressure of trying to do all of that. End of year was horrible because you had to come up with all the figures to take to your um, tax preparer. Mm -mm -mm. That was another pain. When it hits the end of the year, I was like, oh. Mm. But... If you have a team to help you do this, it's gonna be so much better. Mm. And another thing about running your own business is that, you know when someone is working for you and someone comes in late, they might be, mm, we're closed. When we at our restaurant, if you come at 10 and we still have food, we gonna serve you. So you gotta have that commitment. You gotta treat it as your own. Don't be treated as like you're working for someone else because people ain't gonna respect you. Now, mm. Mm -mm -mm. now I know the cool thing about my restaurant is that a lot of the players of the Houston Texan football um, player came to my restaurant. Yeah, they had a training camp at a resort that's in the same community that the restaurant was at. And when they were off from the training camp, they would come to the restaurant and eat all the time. So I had celebrities at my restaurant too. <laughs> But, you know, all of those things were so great. And they raved about the food. So, you know, that all made it worth it in the end. It's just like YouTube. Now I'm doing YouTube. And I have so many great people that come on my channel. And, sorry, they enjoy what I do over here. And that just motivates me to do even better the next time. Hmm. Now, my verdict on this um, chicken batter, it makes a really nice batter. Simple, easy. Um, it's flavorful. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Now, there's this place in Ocherius. I don't know if it's still there. But it was called Remiki. It's in um, Pineapple. What's your reals? Um, mm, mm, mm. This dumpling and fried chicken remind me of the days when I used to go to Remy and get one fried dumpling and then a piece of chicken. Mm. When you hear that, mm, 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 mm. I couldn't even finish four dumplings today. Mm. But I ain't gonna go to waste. I'm gonna eat it later. These are very filling. Um, fried dumpling is a breakfast food in Jamaica. Mm. Let me tell you what the nice like fried dumpling. Fried dumpling and ackee and sawfish. Mm, mm, mm. Now I have a video on the channel where I do fried dumpling, ackee and sawfish, and fried green plantain. Then you check out that video. Yep. Get some more hot sauce on your chicken. Because it's a must. Mm. Now you know. In Jamaica, they love to put hot sauce and
ketchup fried chicken and I was never with it. And I realized southern people love fried chicken and hot sauce. So I was like, Adrian, let's get with it. Mm. But yeah, so that's my journey on the restaurant business. There's so much more ins and out of it, but you know, I'm the type of person where I like to keep things short and sweet and very informative. So maybe a couple months from now, I may share a little bit more about the journey. But as for right now, this is the finale episode of my restaurant experience. If you have any questions down below, just drop them down below. And guys, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching. If you like the content and you've been here before and you still haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Turn on your notification bell because you don't want to miss a brand new up upload. <laughs> As I always say, share with your friends, share with your family, share with your neighbors. Don't be selfish because they want to be a part of this fun and personality. Guys, I want to say thank you so much for watching. Don't click off the video just yet because you're going to be serenaded by the one and only Silas Mukbang. Guys, I'll see you later. Do you want to